November 24th, 2018. Casemaster attempts to finish out an old dungeon's PB. The game says no. I wouldn't call Twilight Princess crash prone, but it does have its moments. Here are some crashes speedrunners are wary of that hopefully you'll never see on a stream. Orden Village is one of the safer locations in the game. It takes some serious effort to take damage here, let alone to die. But crashing is easy. After obtaining the wooden sword from the chest in Link's house, we need to head outside and speak to the village children to begin the slingshot and sword tutorials. But if we take the sword out and jump attack down, then press A to talk to Mallow, we will not learn how to use the slingshot or sword. Talking to Mallow appears to be the issue, as without making Mallow recoil with the jump attack, it's not possible to talk to him directly here. Nearly all speedruns skip the wooden sword entirely, but this is important to know for glitchless categories. After clearing Orden and the Twilight and Farron comes the Forest Temple, in which we obtain the Gale Boomerang from the miniboss Ook after saving four of the dungeon's eight captive monkeys through dubious means. Beating Ook is easy. Wait for him to throw the boomerang, then bonk on the pillar he's standing on to get the boomerang to knock him down, then wail on him while the boomerang waits patiently atop the pillar. But it's possible to knock Ook off right as the boomerang gets back to him so he falls with it in his hand, and attacking him in this state. Those other four monkeys will have to learn to live in captivity. The boomerang is required for any category that finishes the game, so this is a must-know crash. Thankfully, it's easily avoided. If you see the boomerang in Ook's hand on the ground, just wait out the cycle without attacking. Did I mention crashing was easy in Orden Village? After taming Epona, whether through the conventional means or otherwise, we can get the iron boots by wrestling bow. In a casual playthrough, this would take place before it's possible to obtain the Zora armor or magic armor, but speedruns often access Laneru and complete the Twilight early, which makes it possible to have the Zora armor before wrestling bow. Twilight Princess HD any percent and all dungeons runs do in fact get the Zora armor before wrestling bow. And while wrestling bow is no runner's favorite part of the game, bad RNG is no match for what happens if we try to switch Link's armor during the wrestling match. There's never supposed to be an opportunity for the player to switch armor while wearing Orden clothes or the wrestling variant, so the game simply can't do it. We also gain access to this next crash after taming Epona. Epona is great for traveling across the expanse of Hyrule Field, but she's also great for traveling beyond the expanse of Hyrule Field. With a glitch called Map Glitch, which disables loading zones and void planes, it's possible to take Epona beyond a loading zone and ride her out of bounds. Parking Epona in an out-of-bounds location that's accessible from inbounds, and then saving and quitting to disable Map Glitch, then allows for riding Epona out of bounds to a load zone that might not be accessible from inbounds, then getting off Epona to enter that load zone. Epona out of bounds is useful in low percent for skipping the Castle Town Warp Portal, and in different forms in Forest Temple No Save and Quit, and the optimal Wii Any Percent Route. The one catch is that if you ever hit a load zone for an area Epona isn't meant to be in while still on Epona, it becomes clear there are places Epona's not meant to be, and places Epona's really not meant to be. Note that there are other methods for reaching this kind of Epona crash that don't involve going out of bounds, but I can't think of any time they could lead to a realistic crash risk in a speedrun. With Epona tamed and Bo van va um, vanquished, we can now head to the Goron Mines. There's the standard path to the dungeon entrance, winding around Death Mountain and populated with friendly Gorons, but there's also an elevator to the top conveniently located near a wall we can clip through. Early elevator is used in the category Goron Mines RTA and was used in now outdated all dungeons and 100% routes, but with the caveat that if you try to put on the iron boots before jump attacking out of bounds, the trick doesn't save as much time. The game crashes because it tries to run checks on the ground Link is on when there isn't any. This crash is one of the better known among runners and viewers, as it nearly happens in most attempts runners do, and is only evaded through good movement and occasionally sheer luck. On the way to open up Laneru, the player must take down a Shadow Kargarok to then kill its Bulblin Rider in order to fly to Zora's Domain. It turns out that it's possible to kill the Rider without taking down the Kargarok though, because there's a handy lake nearby, and as we all know, Bulblins are water soluble. By luring the Kargarok towards the lake so that it dunks the rider, we can save a few seconds over the normal fight. But if we happen to get grabbed by the Kargarok while the Bulblin rider dies, the game can't handle the cutscene of Link being grabbed overlapping with the cutscene of the fight ending, and Laneru remains closed. 
This can happen in any glitched full game category, and it's one of the biggest time losses possible in some. For example, in the current any% percent route, failing this strat would cost about 9 minutes, not including the time spent rebooting the console. One spectacular side effect of getting the Master Sword early, as nearly all glitched speedruns do, is that the game fails to automatically transform Link in some instances during the early game before he's meant to be able to transform on his own. This leads to some truly memorable cutscenes, such as taming Epona as Wolf in 100%, or getting the Master Sword as Human in Moon Jump Any% that miraculously don't crash the game. The exception is the well-known Interlopers cutscene that follows completing Lenaru Twilight. It lessens the impact of the cutscene somewhat that Link appears to have been disassembled, but just a bit more that we don't get to see the end. Fortunately for speedrunners, although it's very common for runs to involve getting the Master Sword and later beating Lenaru Twilight, this cutscene is skippable with two start presses, so I doubt anyone has ever lost a run to it. This crash is exclusive to the GameCube version. After the player skips the aforementioned cutscene, Lenaru is Twilight free and local businesses open back up. Isa's minigames are now available, and 100% runs complete both for a bomb bag and bomb bag upgrade respectively. In Isa's second minigame, the player is meant to get at least 25 points by shooting pots on the ride down the river. There's one pot back at the entrance to the minigame though, and if I shoot it, nothing happens. Hmm. Uh, how about on the Wii version? Nope, nothing. Well, this is embarrassing. I need to check my notes. Did I mix this up with something else? Hmm. Ah, there we are. We 100% runners don't give in to the temptation. Jumping ahead somewhat, the next speedrun relevant crash is in City in the Sky, a dungeon that I find to be a lot of fun to speedrun, not least because of the abundance of boomerang long jump attacks, or LJAs. Some runners prefer to be more cautious in setting up their LJAs using visual cues to make their starting positions more consistent, but some runners have been in for a rude awakening setting up this LJA. Similarly to the early elevator crash back in Death Mountain, this crash is caused by the pot caught in the boomerang telling the game to look for data on the ground that doesn't exist. This LJA is in all glitched full game categories, but thankfully the crash can be avoided easily by standing basically anywhere other than where I did in the video just now. And finally, we reach the end of the run. Having avoided what seems like a minefield of crash potential by now, all that's standing between us and a nice PB is Puppet Zelda. Will she give good RNG a quick 7 cycle fight? Oh wait a sec, I forgot to equip the ball and shit. Right. Turns out pressing the D-pad to open the item wheel on the same frame that Zelda's boss text comes up on the screen crashes the game. Yes, a frame perfect crash mere minutes from the end of a run. And yes, we do it on purpose sometimes for funsies. This covers about half of the crashes I compiled in my list, both from digging through Discord and through personal experience. For brevity, I focused on crashes that could be seen in a speedrun, though some are quite a bit more common than others. Maybe I'll make another installment sometime going over some of the more arcane ones, or maybe some softlocks. The world is mu- Huh. I thought that was gonna crash. Whoops. 